What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today's gonna be a little extra weekend edition. And uh, if you look in the back there, you can actually see my outdoor blue tongue skink enclosures, which I'm gonna be showing you these because I'm actually gonna be keeping the blue tongues outside during the day so that they could bask in the sun, the natural sunlight. And I think I'm hoping that's gonna help with the breeding of these guys. I can't wait to actually get them in there. And I wanna show you my new blue tongue skink setup they're coming out of brumation today. So let's take a look and we're gonna take a look at some cool boas. Okay guys, uh, I wanted to show you my, uh, we haven't talked about my blue tongue skinks in a while. I just took them out of brumation. They were in my cold room, my Australian room as I call it. And I have these rabbit hutches that they were living in inside. Um, and I'm gonna show you what I, I've replaced them with vision cages, which are beautiful. They cost a lot of money, but I kept these because these rabbit hutches really are meant to be outside. You can even see they have like a real roof on them. I put them out here and I didn't know what to do with them. I'm like, you know what? I am, when I went to Australia, I noticed like um, a lot of guys, Peter Birch and um, Colin Schum uh, Schumark, they, they keep their blue tongues outside sometimes, you know? And so I said, you know what? I, I really believe that the blue tongues need natural sunlight. So I'm going to put them outside during the day, let them bask, get that UV light. It might help with the breeding. And then during the night, you know, before we leave or before Papa leaves or I, you know, go back to my house, we'll put them back in the inside cages, which I'm going to show you in a minute so that, you know, there's no predators or, you know, nothing bothers them overnight. So that's the goal right now. So that, and you can see, I just took them out of probation and they're already laying in all three out of four of them are laying in the sun, uh, getting some nice basking. I put some food there. They haven't eaten in about eight weeks. So hopefully they'll chow down a little bit. And I, I'm pretty sure what the routine is now in a week or so, we'll introduce males and females and we'll maybe get some breeding this year. This will be the first year, hopefully, you know. I think I finally got the routine down. So this is my uh, my new blue tongue setup. Let's go inside and take a look and see their cages. All right, here are the um, four foot vision cages. They're not as tall as my uh, my carpet python vision cages. They're a, little, uh, they're a little shorter this way, but because blue tongues don't climb, they just need the, the space, the floor space. And probably for most people, this is too big. I like to give my blue tongues uh, the ability to kind of thermoregulate and have a little more room to move around. Lizards are not snakes. They like to move. So we got to put the glass on here. We're going to put some coconut husk in here. They have a hot spot over here, and which is nice and warm, by the way. And then we'll, we'll set them up here with a hide box. And this is where they'll be during the night. And then during the day, they'll be outside. Now, I have I bought five of them just because I didn't want to waste the space. So I'll probably put, I might put one of my carpet pythons on the top right there. Thinking about maybe my spot, uh, my granite caramel zebra male. Even though using the males I keep in smaller containers, I just think he's so gorgeous. I just want to put him in a, in a nice display tank and uh, maybe with a light on it so I can see how beautiful he is and look at him and appreciate him. Pablo built that nice base with the uh, wheels so we can move it around if we wanted to move the whole rack at one time. And we got a nice thermostat on there. So we're all set with the blue tongues. All right, here's a really, my beautiful female scoria that's produced some nice babies for me in the past. Um, breeding her to a fire diamond to produce some hopefully scoria fires. I really think they're gorgeous. And she's her scales look like they're really stretched. So I'm hoping maybe she might be possibly have some babies in her or getting close. Uh, she definitely looks big. I haven't really fed her too much over the last, you know, few months. So she looks bigger than she should be. So that could be a good sign. Once again, she has been, a, she is a proven breeder. So I, although the male isn't, he seems to be big enough and um, we'll see what we get. So this, this could be an exciting litter. All right, they're all set up, blue tongue cages. I brought them in from outside. They're all in their cages now. Really nice setup here. Let's open this up a little bit. Gonna put some lights in here. They got a bowl, get their food, their little hide box. They got the heat under the hide box, and uh, everyone's all set to go. So, there's my little albino male. Hopefully, next week we'll pair them up and we'll see if we can get some uh, blue tongue babies. That's the goal. Beautiful little guy, huh? All 
I've been checking this beautiful, beautiful IMG Motley Annery head albino, albino, uh, boa. She is huge. She's been laying on that hot spot. I'm suspecting we're gonna get a litter from her soon. She was bred to a moon glow boa. That's a hypo albino azanthic, so we can produce IMG moon glows. That would be obviously one great thing to produce. We're gonna produce stuff that's not necessarily albino too. 50% will be albino. And I like that because I like to produce some stuff that can make black snakes. Annery, motley, everything's gonna be annery. Half of them will be motley, which is great. And then half of those will be IMG. So IMG, Annery, Motley's are the blackest snakes. And you can see how black she is. Look at that. Look at that. The sheen and that rainbow color because of the fact that she is so, so black. Keep you updated. Now there's a nice little sight to be held. This is a double hat Costa Rican tea positive, which is a really beautiful tea positive line, the caramel albino line of boas. And it's also a uh, het for leopard. So leopard we know is very red and we know that T positive removes darkness. So we get, get a really, really reddish snake. Um, I haven't produced any of this. It'll be the first year I'm producing. I got these from uh, my good friend Warren and uh, Warren has some really great animals. We did a trade for this, uh, for these. I gave him some onyx boas. He gave me uh, 1.2 of these. Females, I have another female that, uh, it's hard to breed more than one female with the same boa, male. You know, sometimes you get nothing if you do that. So I'm gonna leave these until this female is not interested in him and then maybe I'll put him in with the other female. Probably more than likely it'll be next year. Here's a little update on my IMG Scoria boa. Beautiful. Also head albino. Getting really dark, look at that. Look how dark this scoria. I've never seen a scoria this dark. Because remember, scorias really remove pattern and really remove color and lighten. They're almost like purple, you know, a normal scoria. But look at that tail. Look how black it's getting. Is that amazing? I love scorias. And oof, this little girl is going to be amazing when she gets older. Wow. Here's a little very hungry, always hungry, hypo labyrinth female that I'm growing up. She wants to eat my phone, I think. And she's got, her Her head is very small, but her freaking belly is huge and she'll eat anything pretty much you give her. Uh, really exquisite color. Hypolabies are really, really nice. This is possible head VPI too. So she's, you know, she's definitely a keeper. And you can see that labyrinth pattern. When you put hypo in there, or she's even possible super hypo. Sometimes you lose some of the labyrinth aspect of the snake but let me see if i can get her down to calm down a little bit look at that beautiful labyrinth pattern wow these these labby boas are some of the be most beautiful morph boas that are around i think and you know obviously the the super form of the labby is the crystal i'll show you her sister in a second here's that girl's beautiful sister this is the hypo possible super hypo um Super Labby, which is known as a crystal. It's a blue-eyed, leucistic snake. Gorgeous, look at that light eye. Look at that white, white look. That's not albino. That is just super labyrinth with a little bit of hypogene mixed in. Beautiful, beautiful white snake. She's, these, these girls are young. They're gonna take a couple years to grow up, but you always gotta be thinking about the next generation. And these are just mind-bogglingly beautiful. Love this girl. Here's another possible super hypo labyrinth. It's possible het VPI. It's positive. And he's a little he's he's put on some good size, this guy. He's the, the the brother of that those two girls. And I'm growing him up too. I lost unfortunately. I have my male labby. For some reason my female labby died. I don't know what. She had like diarrhea and you know, sometimes things you just lose. Look at this slabby. She's she's got almost like blue. He's got almost a blue eye already, and he's not even a he's not even the uh, leucistic form. The, when you add that hypo and super hypo two copies to a labby, you can get a blue eyed snake. A lot of people think that if you have a blue eyed snake, you have a leucistic, but 
that's not necessarily the truth. Even hypo and fire will give you almost a, like a blue-eyed snake too, or T positive and fire. So there's a lot of ways to get blue-eyed snakes. It's harder to get, a, obviously, the only way you can get an, a red-eyed snake would be to have albino, but the blue-eyed seem to be a little more prevalent in boas, even in the non-leucistic form. And we'll finish up this little quick weekend edition with this, what I believe to be my, my greatest accomplishment in the Sterling Boa project. Sterling Boa is a recessive trait that is, uh, creates a patternless boa. This is either a hypo or possible super hypo, and it, is, it contains the Russo red pastel line. So that's a line bred trait or polygenic trait, meaning that it's just basically the reddest snakes being bred to the reddest snakes. This incarnation, this, this look at that snake, he's got a red eye. And it's not albino, obviously. This female that I produced uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, she's the best I've ever produced. So I, I wasn't even gonna hold back because I have a lot of sterling stuff, but she's so good. Once again, you have to hold back the best of the best, especially when you're using, working with line bred traits that this, this snake is just, my, I mean, you would swear there's blood in here or something like that because it's so red and that's just line bred and she's patternless. I mean, she got, they got a little bit of striping, but once again, one of, one of the most beautiful boas I think in my collection, really. And I'm very proud of it because, you know, I basically took Vin Russo's 30 years of hard work producing the reddest snakes and got it into sterling with the hypogene and we got uh, producing really good stuff. Gorgeous, gorgeous snake. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I'm here with my son, Logan, and we're wrapping things up here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. We had a good day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the boa locks and some of the beautiful boas that are growing up, as well as the blue tongue skink enclosure. Logan, how was school today? Good. Yeah? Logan had soccer now. He has MMA fighting, right? What's your favorite uh, YouTube channel? You're supposed to say Palumbo's Pythons and Bows, but that's okay. He likes FGTV and Duddy. I don't know if you guys watch any of that. For now, though, we, uh, we're we going to go play, do some playing, because the weekend has begun. And guess what, guys? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit the like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning. <laughs>